Okay, we're going to look at chapter 7 on logic gate functions. Um, if you have had digital, you have already had some of this. Um, if you've had a programming class, you may have had some of this. Okay, so we're going to look at combinational logic, sequential logic, um, the five basic gates, there are two exclusive gates. We're going to look at Boolean expressions, truth tables, how to simplify Boolean expressions. We're going to look at how to create PLC logic from a logic gate. We're going to look at how to create PLC from the Boolean. And we're going to look at how to do logic gates from a PLC logic. And all of these are questions in the back of your book that we will do. Um, manufacturers of PLCs program usually in one of three ways. Um, what we've been doing so far is ladder logic, right? So we've been programming in ladder logic. That's the way Alan Bradley does it. Some um, manufacturers will program in either um, logic gate circuits or Boolean expressions. Okay, so if you have one of these, you have to learn something a little new. Continue. I put that in here because everybody always asks me, why do I need to know this? So, Okay, there are two basic types of logic gates. We have combinational and sequential. Okay, the combinational is um, asynchronous, which means it does not require a clock fault. So when I put something on the input, it shows up on the output. So it's not waiting for a clock pulse. Um, the only thing the output is waiting on is a change on the input for it to change. Okay. There are five basic gates. We have not gates, also called inverters. We have AND gates, OR gates, NAND gates, and NOR gates. And these are actually listed on page 142. Okay, then we have sequential logic, and we're not going to do a lot with sequential logic, but I want to talk about it for just a minute. Sequential logic, the output waits for a change on the input, but it can only change when the clock changes. So it is synchronous. It is waiting on a clock pulse. Um, the sequential logic devices are either RS latches, D latches or JK flip flops for those of you that are in electronics. Okay. It's not that you have to know these for, for me. Okay. So you don't have to write all that down. I'm just telling you if you've had, had that and you know what those things are, this gives you an idea of where they're used. For this class, you definitely don't have to write this down, but for this class, we will only look at combinational logic. That's why I was telling you you didn't need to write all that down. Okay. For every one of those gates that we just looked at their names, 
there is an algebra equation that is associated with it, and that is known as the Boolean expression. But it's basically just an algebra equation. Okay. There was a man named George Bull who was a 19th century mathematician, and this is just history. I'm not testing you on it. Um, he invented this math that only has two variables. Okay. We know that as binary, right? But he invented this, and he made it either true or false. And so a 1 is true, and a 0 is false. Uh, in our case, a 1 is on, and a, and a 0 is off. Okay? But it's basically the same thing he did. No. You know that a 1 is is on and a 0 is off, and that's really all you need to know from that. Um, so we are going to look at truth tables. And truth tables are we take and make every combination possible for those two, for, for a certain gate. Okay, you don't have to write this down either. You'll understand it when we get there and we start doing it, okay? So we're going to say we have an AND gate, and we have two inputs. So for two inputs, I have a possible of four combinations. Okay? We only have two conditions, right? If we have two possibilities, which is, if we have two possibilities, we take the binary base and raise it to the second power, and that gives me, Four. So that's how I know it. I come up with four possible combinations. Everybody okay? Alright. So then I put down every possible combination of that. Zero, zero. Right? That's one combination. Zero, one. One, zero. One, one. That's every possible combination with two inputs. Y'all with me? Basically, I count from all zeros to all ones, and that's how many it is. Okay. And then we take those and decide what the output is going to be if I do those inputs. And we'll do that in just a minute. All right. So the basic gates, again, if you didn't get them, not or inverter, and, or, nand, nor. Those are the five basics. Then we have XOR and XNOR, which we'll talk about also. All right, so the inverter, let's start here. The inverter or the NOT gate has a negation, which is a bubble. See that circle on the end of this? Okay, that means whatever comes into this bubble comes out the opposite. We only have two conditions, right? True and false, or one and zero, or on or off, right? However you want to do it. So let's just say one. If I come in this thing as a one, I come out of it as a zero. If I go in it one way, I come out the other. Everybody okay? All right. So the bubble is known as an inversion, so that means all I do is the opposite. Um, a high end gives a low out. A low end gives a high out. I only have one leg, so what are my possible combinations? Two, that's right, two raised to the first power, which is two. I got a zero and a one. So if I put a zero in, I get a one out. If I put a one in, I get a zero out. That's the truth table. Now, the Boolean expression I don't have on here, and I need to put it on here, I guess. Okay. Let's see if I can lay this over and write on it. None. 
the logic gates and motor controls and PLCs are identical. So if you've had logic gates and motor controls, then this should be easier. Do what? Logic gates or logic gates? Same, same identical thing. Alright, so an inverter is if I have an A in and I get an A not out. Or if I have a not A in, I get an A out. Usually it's the first one. Did he show, when you took motor controls, did you go through the Boolean expression and the truth tables or the gates? Huh? Mm -hmm. You did the digital, I know, but did you in motor? Okay, so the difference is, is we just teach it a little different, but it's going to be the same exact thing. Um, when we get to the, um, the actual PLC circuits, they're going to be identical. Okay, so this is the, the Boolean expression. This is the saying, a high end gives a low out. Okay, and then we know that a bubble means invert. Okay. This is the ladder logic or the PLC logic for a NOT gate. So if you, these are two different ones. And if you look in your book, I think they put them together and I hate that. Yeah, if you look on page 146 at the top, rung 0, 0, 0, 0 is actually a NOT gate. And then the other two rungs become a, are a NOT gate. Okay, so all they're showing you is that the NOT gate um, the top line if I do nothing to that circuit, is the light on or off? So it's on with no input. So that's inverter, right? If I push the button and give it an input, what happens? It goes off. So with the input, it goes off. Without the input, it stays on. That is an inverter. Now, the second line shows you doing the same exact thing, only you're using a control relay. So, I, I hit a button to turn on a control relay, which then turns off the light. Now, I always get questions, well, why would you want to do it that way? Well, what happens if your inverter is on a long line of uh, instructions or a long line of PLC? You may not have just one thing that you're doing, so it may be, um, you may have 12 inputs, and then at the end of that, you need to invert them. So sometimes it's easier to use the bottom half as opposed to the top. So just keep that in mind that you can use a control relay inverted, okay? All right, so now we have an AND gate. Uh, one thing I should have told you on the inverter is it always has one input and one output. One, yeah, one input, one output. No more. One and one. An AND gate can have two inputs or more. So I could have a 12-leg AND gate if somebody would build it for me. Chances are they're not really going to build one that big, but... I have seen them with um, eight legs, and I'm sure there are more. Um, so it has two or more inputs because you can't and two you can't and things together if you don't have more than one. Right. 
Um, but it only has one output, never two. So with an AND gate, an AND gate says all highs. So I have to have a high and a high to get a high. Well, the opposite of that is if I have any low, I get a low. You're just looking at the truth table. All right, so let's look at the truth table. Since this has to have two or more legs, let's say I've got one with two legs. What's my truth table? How many possibles on my truth table? Four. If I have three legs, uh-uh, two raised to the third power. Not two times three, two raised to the third power. Two times two is, times two is eight. So I have eight combinations. If you think about it, it's your next step up from your, so what happens if I have four legs? 16. See how that works? Okay. I think there's a question in the end of this chapter that gives you a number of legs and asks you how many possible combinations. We'll check in a minute. All right. So if I have a zero and a zero, what do I get out? Zero. A zero and a one, low. One and a zero, still low. One and a one. Now I get a high or a one out. Everybody okay? A one and a one gives me a one. The The Boolean expression is times. A times B, because this would be leg A, leg B, and we'll just call it X for out. A times B equals X. So what do you get looking back at the truth table? Zero times zero? Zero. Zero times one? One times zero? One times one? One. So see how that works? So times... So you're multiplying using an AND gate. Everybody okay? This is the logic. This would be A, B, X. So if I push, let's just say these are push buttons. I push A. What happens? Nothing. I take my hand off A, I push B. What happens? Nothing. If I do nothing, nothing. What happens when I hit A and B both? Light comes on. So that's an A and a B. Um, has anybody seen that movie, um, Crimson Tide? Where, where they're on a submarine, is, is it a sub? It's a nuclear sub, isn't it? And they get their, they get orders to um, launch this nuclear missile. And I think it's Denzel Washington, I believe, and some crotchety old guy. Yeah, Gene Hackman. He's but he's a crotchety old thing on that show. But anyway. Um, how many keys do they need? Come on, that's the whole point of the whole movie. The key in one room has to be turned, and the key in another room has to be turned, or another part of the ship. Now, why would they do that? Why didn't they put them side by side? Mm -hmm. That's right. So one person can't can't launch a nuclear nuclear missile. So what they've done is they've put them in two different rooms, but they set them up in an and configuration. So it has to have this key and this key. So they took one key out, made him run to one room so they could sneak back in and take the key out of the other room. All right. Next is the OR gate. 
It it also has two or more inputs. Like I said, I could probably have a 16 leg OR gate if I wanted to. Any high gives me a high. All lows give me a low. A high or a high gives me a high. So I'm using the name up here. The Boolean expression is a plus. So A plus B equals X. Now what you have to remember though is any because we only have two conditions, right? On or off. If it's on, it can't get more on. So where one plus one equals two, it just gives us still on. Okay. All right, so zero plus zero is zero, right? Low. Zero plus one is a high. Or one, one plus zero is, okay, thank you. One plus one is, I know it's two, we're going with one. Everybody okay? I'll show you why the only one. This is an OR gate. It's a parallel circuit. Right. And that's where we're going now. So this is parallel. If I push the first one, what happens? Light comes on. If I push the bottom one, light comes on. If I push both of them, Light comes on, but it don't come more on, it's just on, right? Even if I push both of them together. Everybody okay? All right, now we have a NAND gate. A NAND gate is an AND inverted. It still has, it still has two or more inputs and one output. I think I need to move this thing up. Cut that last part off. Um, has one output. All highs will give me a low because this is the reverse of an AND gate. Any low will give me a high. A high and a high give me a low. The Boolean expression is still times It looks pretty much like the AND gate, only inverted. So, in an AND gate, zero times zero is zero, right? Inverted is one. Zero times one is zero. Inverted is one. One times zero is zero. Inverted is one. One times one is one. Inverted is zero. Everybody okay? Decorian, you with us? Okay. Okay, so this would be the NAND gate, and if you look on page, okay, 149, nope, 150, no, where's the, yeah, 150, I don't know why they put it under the NOR gate, but. It is the NAND gate. Two normally closed in parallel will give you an AND gate. Because if I do nothing, the light is on, right? If I hit either one of them, nothing happens. I have to have both of them hit together to turn the light off, right? Okay. Which works out real well unless you're using a whole bunch of things. And, oops.
So if if it is, this part may do better. I'm not real good at circling so with this thing. So the bottom one may work better where you're doing an and and then inverting it. So you do an and to a control relay, then invert the control relay that turns on and off the light. Sometimes that's easier to see when you're doing ands and ors and nans and nors. I mean, nans and nors that use the actual and and or inverted. Everybody okay? So these are the same exact thing, just shown two different ways. Okay, a NOR gate still has two inputs. Any high gives a low. All lows give a high. A high or a high gives a low. So this is going to be like the Boolean expression is going to be like the OR gate with the plus. Only inverted. So 0 plus 0 is 0. Inverted is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Inverted is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1 inverted is a 0. 1 plus 1 is more than 0, so it's on. It's a high. So inverted is a 0. Okay. This would be the ladder logic. Two normally closed in series. Because if I hit either one of them, what happens? Goes off, right? The bottom half is also the same thing. If I hit either one of these, it turns the control relay on which turns the light off. Everybody okay? This is on page 151. Okay, everybody okay with the five basic gates? You got questions? Everybody okay? All right. So now we have two exclusive gates. And exclusive means that the it can have two and only two inputs. And those inputs must be opposite from each other. Okay? So... If you, if there's an exclusive club, everybody doesn't get in, do they? So in this case, since there's only two inputs, they have to be totally opposite from each other. Okay. So a high and a low gives you a high out. All highs give you a low and all lows give you a low. This one has a unique You do it with an A and a B circled. The, I mean the plus is circled. Which means they have to be exclusive. This one's kind of hard to factor in. Okay. But it can also be written as Let's see, A, not B, 
four, not a b. Now that one makes it a little easier to look at. So if a is high, b has to be low. Or if a is low, b has to be high. And then that gives me a one out. So if you look at the truth table, a is low, b is high, and I get a one out. A is high, b is low, I get a one out. Anytime they're the same, what happens? I get a zero. Okay, with this, this would be the logic. And I don't know if y'all can see it real well, but this is a dotted line. And that dotted line means that the two inputs are connected, mechanically connected. Or in our case, they're the same switch. Okay. So for us in PLCs, because we can program the same switch a thousand times, we don't have to have two switches. We can just name them the same thing, right? So if I push this push button right here, what happens to this one? Do what? It's going to open, right? So this one closes, this one opens. And then what happens? If this one closes and this one becomes open, that's right. So I get power going through the top line. Everybody okay with that? All right, what happens if I push this one? This opens up, right? What happens to this guy? It's going to close, and now I get power through here. Everybody okay? Yes, no? Okay. Okay, what happens if I do nothing? No, it stays off. Oh, I thought I said on. Okay. Stays off. What happens if I push both push buttons? Stays off because all I've done is switched it from this on, this off, and this on. Let's see. This on, this off, this off, and this on. So it's still not going to work, right? I've just changed which way it's open and closed. So that's how that logic works with the XOR. Everybody okay? Okay, the exclusive NOR is just opposite. Instead of the center, the uh, opposites turning on, now the opposites are going to turn off. Still only has two inputs one output, but when the, when they're opposite, they're, they're off. So now instead of, we'll have the A, B inverted, which means now for the expression that's easier, I either have all uh, all lows or all highs to give me a high. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? So let's look at the circuit itself, the, the PLC logic. <laughs> You can either use the top one, which shows same same circuit, I mean same switches there and there. So
So if I hit this one, it opens this one, closes this one, right? Well, let's look at start with when we doing nothing. With me doing nothing, it goes through the bottom rung and through the light, right? So it's on. Not doing a thing. If I hit the first switch, it closes the top one, opens the bottom one. So guess what happens? Goes off. If I let go of it and I push the next one, it closes the top, opens the bottom, and it goes off, right? Now if I hit both of them together, it closes the top two, opens the bottom two. So instead of going through the bottom, I'm just going through that top line. Everybody okay? Okay, that's the end of this. So now what I'm going to do is... Okay, so do y'all have any questions over the basic Boolean expressions or truth tables or anything like that? <laughs> Um, if you wanted, I mean, I've got to think. I know there is, there are some. I'll have to think about that one. Um, but when we were talking about the nuclear missile, you might want to have something not happen and then have something else happen. So, in a robot cell, in a robot cell, I don't want you, the robot to be on if the door is open. So instead of that being closed, it might be open. But I might want to have that if it's not open, or if it's open and the pendant is in teach mode, it's going slow enough somebody could be in there with it. So now I have an open and a, and a closed. So that would be an exclusive that, that I might allow. So it would be things like that. There are There are conditions that you want that would match that. Unfortunately, with that one, though, there might be more than two, but that's just the two I can think of. All right, questions? None? Okay, we are going to look at simplifying a Boolean equation. Um, and Mr. Raymond and I teach these very different. So if you've had digital, uh, he usually teaches actually doing the um, Boolean equations. Uh, using the actual rules of Boolean, okay? And what you say? It's hard. Okay. Do what? Okay. There is also a way that you can use what I like to use, Karnoff's maps, okay? This is the one time that you'll use gray code, but you don't really, I'll draw them for you on the test, so you won't really have to use gray code, but just realize that these charts are made with gray code, okay? And what's gray code? What, what did I tell you to know about gray code? It changes one bit at a time, all right? So, if I am looking at a... I thought maybe they might have given us one of this. Um, if I'm looking at a Boolean equation, it has to be, well, we have two, two equations. Let me, let me start there. We have Okay. 
have an SOP and we have a POS. POS doesn't stand for what, you, what I heard somebody snicker. So, and SOP is not standard operating procedure either, but in our case, that's the one we're going to use. Okay. SOP means sum of products. Okay. Products are what? Multiplication. Sum is what? Addition. So what it means is something like this. Okay, so I have the products added together. Similar to the way that we did the um, exclusive case, right? A POS, and I said it didn't mean what it means. It's really hard to do a POS in a Carnoff uh, map, so it basically does stand for the same thing. Would be an A plus B plus C times So that would be a POS. Oops. Oh, no, that's right. Multiplied together. That's right. So I'd have a sum of the products. So they're multiplied together. Now you can multiply these out and make them an SOP. It just takes a while to do it. But what we're going to look at is taking an SOP. Alright, so if I have And I do them a little different than the way the book does them. Okay, I was just trying to make up one that I knew it worked the way I wanted it to. It better now that I've done it. So, all right. The book draws them a little differently, but it works either way. So, since I'm doing it, I'm doing it my way. And that's horrible. So the way we do this is A, B goes down one side. I think the book does them across. I don't, I'm not really sure why. I just don't like them that way. And since I only have C, it goes across the top. So I have a C, a not C, and a C. Now, zero, zero, so I need a... I really wish I hadn't done that quite so close, but anyway. 
That's a not A, not B, right? Well, normally I would do 0, 1, right? Which, in this one, I can do that because that only changes how many bits. The A stays a 0, the B changes, right? Now, the next one, normally I would do 1, 0, but I can't do that because it changes more than one bit at a time, right? So I have all highs. And then I'll come back and have the low B. Okay? Yes or no? No. Okay. This is gray code. And like I said, I'll give you this on the test, but you still need to know it. Zero, zero, right? Because that's a low A and a low B. All right? Then, looking at the next one, would be 0, 1, which I've got. A is still low, B is high. If I were counting, my next one would be 2, which would be a 1, 0, right? Yes. 2 is 1, 0. Everybody agree with that? Okay. I can't do the 1, 0 because I've got to do gray code because I can only change one bit at a time. So I had to go to three and then back to two. So basically counting, this is zero, one, three, two. But I did it because I could only change one bit at a time. So looking at this, um, a low A, low B, right? Then I changed the B to a high. The A stays low, right? So on the next one, the B stays high, I bring the A high. So now I've only changed the A. Okay. Then on the next one, I change the B back to low. But that gets all conditions. They're just in a different order. Everybody okay? Does that get you now? Okay. All right. So going up here to my expression, let's plot these. So where do I have a low A, high B, low C? Low A, high B, low C. Right there. Everybody agree? Actually, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to write over it. I'm just marking it in red so you know the difference between my chart and what I'm marking. All right. So now I need to find a low A, a low B, and a high C. A low A, a low B, and a high C. Everybody okay with that? All right. The next one, they're all low, right? Low A. Low B, low C. Everybody okay? Yes or no? I'm just plotting what I'm giving. All right, the next one is a low A, a high B, a high C. So it goes here. Everybody okay? That's the easy part. Actually, I find all of this easy, but I had to learn that really in uh, algebra, and I don't do that real well. Everybody okay? All right, since all four of these touch each other and share a wall, what I mean by a wall is a wall, everybody okay? I can circle all four of these. And what I do when I circle them is they become a group. And in that group, I can get rid of everything that changes. So look at this. Let's start with the end, C. Does the C change? Do I have both C and not C? In that group. Not any one number, but the whole group. 
Do you see, do those ones have both C's and not C's? Yes. See, not C is in the first column, C is in the second column. Am I in both columns? All right, then, then C goes away. I don't need it anymore. How about B? What's the first one? Not A, not B. What's the second one? Not A, B. So I've got not B and B, right? Goes away. Don't need it anymore. So on this one, A. I've got not A in the top line. i got not A in the second line, right? So I can't get rid of it. So X actually becomes not A. So the simplification of that, of all of that, is not A. Is that easier than that, the Boolean rule? A little bit. Okay. All right, I'm going to do another one. Let's see. I probably need to draw my chart so I can make sure I... Okay, let's try this one. Because this one's kind of a tricky thing, and I want to make sure that you get it. Alright, so not A, not B, not C. Where is it? First square. First square, right? Change colors. Right there? Where's the second one? A, not B, C. It's the last square, isn't it? Alright, how about A, not B, not C? Not A, not B, C. Okay, now the reason I wanted to do this one is because I want to tell you that while these look like they're far apart, they're really not because these things touch because I'm still only gray code and coming back to the top. I would just be adding a line back to A, right? So you have to think about this thing as folding this way from top to bottom and from side to side. Now, on this, we only have two boxes, so side to side makes no difference. But I'm going to give you one in a minute with four, and then you're going to have to look at the box. That would be one group. So that is still one group. It's just looks like two. But if there was the bottom, that's correct. They have to all share a wall or be linked by a wall. 
Alright, so still the same thing. If you're using four, or if you group four different ones, then you remove two variables. So I already know by looking at this, because I'm grouping four, I only had three to start with, what am I going to have at the end? One letter. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm only going to have one. Everybody okay? If I group two, I only remove one. from that grouping. I should say it that way. Everybody okay? No. You can have two groups and you'd end up with two groups at the end. I'll show you that in just a second. Alright, so on this one I'm going to have X is equal to, and if I'm looking at this, my C's change, right? My A's change. I got a not A and an A. So my X is equal to not B. Everybody okay? <clears throat> Looking for the one that does not change. That's correct. So all that gets written down is what does not change. Everything that changes gets thrown away. Because if it can be A or not A, it has no bearing on the, on the circuit, right? Because it can be either. Oops. Can I have a blank one? There it is. Okay, so let's look at four variables. doing this again. So not A, not B, not A, B, A, B, not B. Anything on C, D, not C, not D, not C, D, C, D, C, not D. And they won't all, all be four either. Sometimes you're going to have three or five or I'm going to go ahead and throw a fifth one in here just so I can, we can not have them all in groups of four. Okay, let's plot this one, and I hope it turns out the way I think. I just made up some. All right, so let's plot them. Where does the first one go? 
not A, not B, so it goes in the front line, right? All the way over to C, D. Everybody agree? Hmm. I guess I'm going to make it green just because I want something different. I don't know if that really shows that much different, though. It doesn't. You don't really see red either too much, do you? Okay. All right, where's the next one go? Just to the left of it. Everybody okay with that? Where's the next one go? What? No. Two down. Where's the next one go? No. Alright, where's the last one go? Bottom right. Everybody okay? Okay, you can't connect all of these. You with me? So these can connect. So since there's only two, how many variables am I getting rid of? One. So by getting rid of one, I'm still going to have three, right? So what, what changes or what stays the same? Which way you want to do it? Alright, let's look at this. D or A. What happens with A? Does it stay the same? D. Does it stay the same? C. Does it stay the same? No, it doesn't. How about D? Alright. So that's part of it. Or, now let's go to this group. Does A stay the same? Does B stay the same? Does C stay the same? Does D stay the same? Then I got this poor loon guy out here by himself, so guess what? He just has to go back in there. Everybody okay? Why? Okay, so X was just, I guess I should have put an X. In. I should have done an X equals up there. But. All right. You talking about when I, after I circled them, you got confused? All right, so let's look at the top circle. You see why I circled them, right? Okay. So when I circled these two, you look at A. Just for this group. So in this group, does A stay the same? Well, both of these ones are not A, aren't they? See what I'm saying? Alright, so A stays. Um, both of them are a not B, right? So not B stays. I got a not C and a C. So it goes away. Both of them are D's. So that's why I got that. Does it make sense now? All right, look at the next one. Both are high A's, right? Both are high B's. Right? Because they're on that line. All right. C and not C. Right? So they change. So it goes away. 
both are high D's. So we got that guy. The last one is just, yeah, it's just down there by itself. All right. I'm going to get rid of that. Going back to my blue ink color. Uh oh, I should have gotten rid of that. Let's say that this is my new this is my new equation. Let's just say I plotted up these first two. And now I need to plot the second one. So now it's A, not B, C, D, right? And it goes right here. Okay. Does that share a wall with another one? Yes, it does. But that one is already in a group, but it doesn't matter. So I can actually recircle these now. And instead of this, so so instead of the first one I had, now what changes? Does A change? Does B change? Uh, look at it again. Does B change? Yes, it does. B and not B, right? Alright. Does C and, does C change? Does D change? If they're in the same row, that row is the, the, everything in that row stays. They're in a column, everything in the column stays. So now that would be my new one. Okay, here, here's the rules. You can only circle twos, fours, and eights, and sixteens. Okay, you can't do threes. You can't do sixes. So just like we do counting in columns, you can do one by itself, which is your first your first binary column, right? You can do two, which is the next one. You can do four, you can do eight, you can do it just like that. Okay? But you can't do six. A six is actually two fours. And y'all don't know what I mean, do you? Until I have to think about this every time, I still don't do gray code well. Okay, let's say I've got six. And they're all right together because what happens? Fold, right? Y'all also know that you fold sideways too. So these would match over here with these. Okay, so top to bottom and so if you got them in all four corners, that's a 
they all match. Okay. All right, but so I'd have these four, right? So that would be A, not B, D. D. Or then I would group this guy with this one, right? And I would have not B because A goes away. Wait a minute, something I didn't do something right. I didn't do something right on the first one. Let me start over. All right, let's see. All right, my first group down here, the A changes, I mean, the B changes, the A does not. Oh, the C changes, the D does not. There we go, A, D. Or... A, B, the A changes, the B does not. The C changes, the D does not. So that would be my new equation, a simplified equation. This may sound hard. When you get the digital, if you can remember this, it'll help you out. Because I don't think Mr. Raymond does Boolean. Does, I mean, does uh, Karnoff's, does he? I used to go down there and teach Karnoff's during his class, but I don't do that too much anymore. He don't like them. All right, questions? There is a logic converter that's part of that disk that they gave you. You can use it, but realize you won't have it on the test. So don't use it exclusively. And even if I do like I did this time and give you a take home test, or you can use it. When it comes to the final, you won't have it. Okay. All right, so any questions on what we've done today? Okay, let's see.